And we're recording. All right, welcome to the Helm Developer Call. Um, this is October 4th, 2018. Um, usual format, um, we go through announcements, um, core maintainers give their standups, and then um, have uh, open discussion. Um, let's see, so we have one announcement and um, about five, six hours worth of discussion on the agenda. So we better get going. Um, so let's start with announcements. Um, the Helm org maintainers vote. Who wants to talk about that? Uh, Butcher, do you want me to do it? Do you want to do it? Uh, I can do it if you want. Um, uh, I, I just want to say one thing before you do it. And I can share my screen. I have the, the post. Oh, good. That's, that's what I was just looking for. So I have it up, I can share it. But I just want to say, you know, we had in the initial election, we had seven slots and we had nine people who ran. And uh, it was wonderful to not have, to all have good choices. And um, when we look at this, you know, uh, even though the, the org maintainers can expand to be up to nine people, um, we'd originally just set seven. So we had to hold to that because in governance, you have to file your governance. So if the people who didn't get it, and you'll see uh, it was really close. Um, if they want to be nominated and go again, please feel free to, to entertain that conversation um, because everybody here is really quite wonderful. And I know that when Matt and I were looking over the results and we said, okay, obviously we knew from the beginning when we had nine people, two people weren't gonna be voted in. We had to say, what do we say? How do we approach this? Because they're good people and um, we love their contributions and involvement. How do, we, how do we handle this? Like when we did this number, I wasn't even sure we'd get seven. Um, and so just understand that everybody is really valuable and if you're interested, there are open slots. It was just kind of what we'd agreed to with us. And in governance, you got to hold to your governance. Right. So with that, I'll hand it over to Butcher. Yeah, and the the, mar the margins on the last one were as thin on the last, well, actually on, the, on most of the voting, the margins were as thin as you could possibly get. Um, there, there was no, yeah, it was, it was impressive. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'm glad that uh, Cornell did the calculation so we didn't have to. <laughs> All right, uh, you wanna share your screen and I'll go through them? Sure. Um... So we are prepping a blog post to, to announce this uh, later on today, but this is uh, what, what the early one looks like in no particular, well actually in alphabetical order by first name, uh, the ones who are voted in were Adam Reese, Adnan, uh, all of the mats, uh, Reinhard and Vic. And again, the, the margins were just incredibly razor thin on all of these. So uh, it, thank you everybody for voting. And, uh, and, and again, like Matt said, I reiterate the fact that we actually can add up to nine people. So if people would like to consider adding the, uh, renominating the, the people, renominating people, I would be all in favor of that. Uh, so this blog post will go out. When, when is this blog post going to go out? I haven't posted a PR on it yet. So right after this call, I'll put up the pull request and then we can get it out. So hopefully here shortly. And that'll be our official way of announcing that. And I'll email the mailing list and all of that as well afterwards. Um, and yes, we did look through, by the way, we looked through who, who got the top seven and we did map it to the three, two, two that we had to do for who's a maintainer on what projects and all of that. Um, we did, and we double checked that actually took probably an extra five minutes to make sure we'd mapped everything right, just to make sure that it all fell out from top to bottom that way. So all that legwork was put into the process. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to field them. Um, No, um, <clears throat> hey, this is Scott. Just just one question only. Would it be helpful to have additional uh, people there? Um, you know, I'm I'm very happy with these results personally. Um, even though I'm not in the list, I'm I'm happy. You know, uh, basically it's just whatever is the most helpful, and you know, let us let us know. And I think the answer there is we have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How what the cadence is, is going to yeah. be like, you mean, and all of that? Yeah. Yeah. This is wholly new. Um, 
And so, yeah, like Matt said, I, I don't even know what to say here, quite frankly. How many we would be good or useful or any of that? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. All right. The one, the one thing it might be useful to have more is if um, for things when you need votes by a certain number of people, um, or is it just always a percentage? Because if like if people are out of town or something, to get additional votes on things that are obvious, like um, consensus type decisions. Yeah, uh, it, all of that. What you need is listed on here, um, and and with other boards and things like that, when you need to have votes and people are out of town, you normally structure things to enable them to get involved in voting. Um, lots of boards go through this all the time. And so I, I'm not expecting that to be a problem. Um, a lot of very few things have a time limit put on them for a number. And in our case, I think um, our, our time limits are only in a few things like the nomination process, which is like three weeks, right? We give lots of time or with voting, we put a minimum, minimum three business days. Uh, and so there are certain things that are baked into here, but for a lot of them, there isn't a re uh, required time constraint. And so it's, it's fluid in how long it takes us to vote unless we set some kind of goal and then we start bugging people. Um, so I don't know if, if that's an issue uh, in the governance structure, but uh, as Matt said, I, I really don't know. <laughs> don't know. We'll all find out very soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, thank well, thanks, Matt and Matt, for um, taking care of that and uh, handling the voting for that. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, all right, let's jump into stand-ups because we got a lot to cover. Um, let's see, Anon, you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, so I've been working away on Monocular 1.0 stuff. Uh, right now, I've been trying to figure out the CI stuff. Uh, so just I'm moving it to Circle CI because I think that's what we're using everywhere else, uh, and also getting it to build a new um, new API server and chart repo tool that we have there. Uh, I'll pass it on to Josh. Um, I was mostly out of town. Um, I did, however, uh, I started talking with um, Microsoft Containers uh, team and jfrog about uh helm push type stuff um the azure team has done some interesting things about um around the api design so i'm considering uh whether it's best to go closer to what they're doing for um chart museum um what else that's that's pretty much it um, Matt Farina. Um, I've been working a bit on the hub site and the Azure account and getting that stuff going. Uh, we have an Azure account. We have a Kubernetes cluster in it. I'm um, getting stuff documented and going. Um, the thing that is kind of the block thing, which will be coming up here, is how do we store secret information? It's one of those things that I'd like to chat about here to not take lightly on our initial implementation because we need to store stuff in an encrypted way. But that's kind of what's holding me up from doing this stuff. We have actually have DNS routing to the cluster, um, Nginx Pros, uh, Ingress, all this stuff, Cert Manager, all this stuff's installed and ready to go. Now it's just kind of making a couple decisions. Uh, and we'll be off to the races. So that's primarily what I've been focused on this week and will be continued to focus on until Adnan has everything he needs. And all of my bots and all of the stuff I've been running is turned over to this cluster. Uh, if somebody is a charts maintainer or something and needs to be onboarded to it, also reach out to me and I'm happy to talk about the process. Or if somebody needs to be onboarded to this, let me know. All of that will be documented soon. Uh, Butcher, I'll pass it off to you. Uh, okay, um, I've had the uh, highly illustrious task this week of transferring the Helm trademark to CNCF. So I've been doing a lot of paperwork. Um, uh, the current trademark uh, never got completely transferred over to the Kubernetes org. 
So it is still technically a Microsoft trademark. So I'm working with the Microsoft lawyers to just make sure all the paperwork is filled out and sent over to CNCF. Uh, so we should have that done in time, um, in time being before KubeCon. Um, other than that, um, been doing the PR reviews and things like that on, on the Helm 3 stuff. I can give a brief update for Brian who is uh, work through working through the Lua engine stuff this week. Um, he's actually I can't give a brief update because I don't remember how far he got as of yesterday. But he's made it. He's made it a good way through the testing of the of all the internal libraries and uh, is basically if actually Adam might be able to fill in a little on that. I'm, I know he made it through all the arithmetic operators. That's as far as I followed that. Uh, yeah, he's working his way through standard lib right now, and I think he's checked oh, out too. Yeah. Um, he had some, he's finding some great idiosyncrasies in Go as he goes. So it's been fun to watch him do that. Um, yep. So that's it for me. I'll pass it to, um, to Vic. Vic still, yep, Vic. So Vic says he has no mic, but his brief update is he's been getting back into the charts repo reviews. Uh, and with that, I lost paying attention. How about, uh, who do we have here? Uh, Fisher. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for this last week, um, just been kind of like maintaining the issue queue, seeing if there's any um, big pressing issues that have been wanting to push out a uh, version 2.11.0, or I mean 2.11.1. Um, nothing really has come up at this point where it's pressing for us to release a patch release. Um, but that's been what I've been mostly maintaining is kind of looking at the issue queue, um, seeing if there's any serious bugs or if there's any kind of release stuff um, going on. So that's what I've been maintaining. Um, continuing on uh, with anything like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, oh, and also uh, helping out Matt Farina with the uh, hub.helm.sh with like the DNS uh, cutover and stuff like that. So kind of helping out here and there with uh, some Helm 3 work. Um, I think that is it from the core maintainers list. So I'll kick it back to Adam. Okay, uh, this past week for me has been um, focused on uh, Helm 2 and uh, Kubernetes 1.12. Uh, um, I haven't opened up a pull request yet because um, Kubernetes, um, for those who aren't aware, um, had a lot of issues with this release. Um, there is um, still some issues being resolved around releasing um, Client Go and API Machinery and API where they are not released yet. Um, there were some issues with uh, um, the cherry picks and um, uh, some uh, commits were not included in the tagged release, so the builds were breaking. So they're still working on resolving that. I've been told it should be done today. Um, so if that gets done today, I'll open up a pull request. Um, and that's for, that's for Helm 2. Um, and then, um, is there anything uh, um, anyone wanted to bring up that is not a core maintainer today? Yeah, sure. Could I ask something? Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of in relation to, I uh, bounced it off Matt Fisher uh, yesterday. So I'm trying to get more involved and, and help out more. So it's in relation to, we'll say, workload and stuff. So is it correct to say at the moment the V3 uh, code base is, is locked down for uh, non-core people, is it? Um, yeah, that's, and the reason for that is it's changing. Um, the, the core internals of it are changing so much and so quickly that um, uh, we're still kind of figuring out where things are going to go, so it's it's very difficult to have multiple people working on it at the same time. Um, until we get that core code path complete, then we'll start opening it up. Um, we have said we'll um, accept uh, uh, 
um, um, like documentation changes because that doesn't affect the code path. Um, so if anybody wants to get working on documentation for it, or um, th there's a few different areas that we can. But as, as far as the the core code base, we're um, we're trying to push back on that for a little bit longer. Okay, that that sounds understandable. So I I'll have a look at the design proposal, um, and in relation to like documentation changes. Is that something we need to identify ourselves? Or so I had a look at what uh, we'd say open issues are at the moment. Uh, and I suppose there isn't a lot there because you're working through them or whatever. Uh, in relation to the docs and stuff we can do on that, uh, what is the best way of, of, of helping out there? Um, what I'm planning on doing right now, because I, I haven't um, uh, included any sort of uh, like here's the major changes that have happened. Here's some stuff. Here's some stuff that's in progress. Um, what I'm going to do is update the README on that. I've been working on um, creating a little bit of a robust change log um, for what's been going through. Um, uh, just off the top of my head, um, the documentation in the code has been updated for anything that has been changed. README or any markdown files have not. Um, one good example of uh, um, that somebody could jump in is to update the documentation on there being no more tailored. Because um, that, that part's done, it's complete, um, the, the documentation could be updated. So um, what I want to do is, you know, have somewhere that this stuff is recorded in the branch so people could go and see it and check it off. Um, the other thing I thought of was um, having a GitHub uh, project. Um, the only issue with that is then you have to have issues associated with it. So I don't want to pollute the issue queue when um, the issue queue right now should be focused more around Helm 2 because Helm 3 is really the skunk works thing right now. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure the best way to handle it, but I'm, I'm thinking it's just going to be update the readme or have another documentation in the root directory. So I'm, I'm open. Um, sometime next week, I'll have that completed. Okay. I might give a little bit more direction on where people can jump in and start helping out. Yeah, and if I can also add some additional color here too, um, that actually brings up a good point, Adam, that it's not just the core code base that is needing changes. Like there's the core refactoring that um, Adam and Brian and a couple of others are working on right now, like with the Lua refactoring. Um, but there are ancillary projects that are also being worked on at the same time. So for example, like the charts testing project, um, the, the CI infrastructure that's going on, um, the website that's kind of like being, there's a couple of changes that we should be doing for docs.helm.sh um, in terms of like the infrastructure changing over from like the docs folder in Helm Helm over to uh, Helm triple W. So there's, um, a couple of larger infrastructure side projects as well. So if you're interested in kind of working on those or at least um, discussing about those, then we can definitely uh, talk about that offline too. Sure, yeah, Let, let's do that. So I'm, really what I'm trying to do is help here uh, to, to load balance some of it. And I don't really mind doing any work. So if trains have to be cleaned, I'll, I'll do that. Great, awesome, we appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? We're ready to jump into discussion. Brian, you unmuted. Uh, uh, I'm assuming you're just getting ready to start rattling through these, so. Uh, for me? Yeah. yeah, I only had the first one. Um, and so uh, the rest isn't me. And, and the only thing that I want to talk about, if you look at the first one, uh, is the encrypted secrets for sites and services. How are we going to share and store the encrypted information. So for a simple example, we've got bots that need to make call back to the GitHub API. And we run those bots as something that receives a webhook and a Kubernetes cluster. And so we stick it as a secret in the cluster, right? Well, how do we back that up? How do we store it? How do we share it? How do we do it in a way where if that secret needs to be updated for that bot, that any of the people involved can go make that change and it's not just locked down to one or two people but yet it is still safely stored uh, for now we've been storing a lot of the stuff in keybase 
But the problem with Keybase is it's encrypted in storage, but it's unencrypted locally and somebody could walk your file system and get to it. And so we'd have to trust that everybody's file system is always safe and protected, which isn't so true anymore. It's an attack vector and people know it. So it'd be nice to have a more secure way to do that. I've looked at things such as Stack Exchange's black box, which uses PGP keys to store things. And if you've got multiple people, it handles all of that as long as you know about the PGP keys. And then you can unencrypt and re-encrypt everything or individual files and, and do stuff like that. Um, there are other things such as Vault or Azure's key management service where you can stick things into there and then pull them out on demand. Uh, if it's Vault, we'd have to then operate it. Um, stuff like that. And so I'm kind of, and there's things like, um, uh, sealed secrets that the NAMI folks have worked on, but then we also need a way to back up the certificate it uses. Um, and I'm still not sure about some of the workflows like the update and edit workflow. Like how do you go change a secret inside of something? I, I haven't found, I, I poked around and I saw how to create stuff initially, but not change it later. Um, and so I'm looking for ideas and directions to go on so we can actually lock this stuff down when we start launching things. Any suggestions? Um, one thing that might be a decent suggestion is while we're trying to make like uh, security best practices or kind of like encrypting those secrets and stuff. Um, one thing that was really helpful when Deus was going to production was that we had a set of go to production documentation. Um, and that really helped with like going through, it was kind of like almost a run book in some ways where um, it was just like, this is how our production system is set up. This is how you go into the cluster. This is how you connect, use these credentials over here, um, fetch them from wherever it was from and decrypt it. Uh, and this is kind of like the run book on how we set it up and things like that. So if we had at the very least, um, I would say like, even if we bake these practices in and say that these are all encrypted and whatnot, having some form of documentation showing like how do we actually grab those credentials how do we use them how do we um how do we basically modify the cluster if we're going in and things are um, so we yeah, i've actually started that cluster. documentation already i'm actually stuck at the tooling we use to share things securely right and store that because i've got a git repo that i'll be pushing up somewhere that has the documentation and the details it's actually documents even how its structure works um, and launching some of the stuff into it, like Nginx Ingress and how that's in and the details around it. And even any custom values files and stuff are in there. Uh, the question is kind of what, what tool can we use and how should we go about securely storing and sharing credentials? That's the really specific problem I'm trying to narrow in on. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I'm curious what folks here have to say about it. Any suggestions? Is it really decrypted plain text on disk for Keybase? Like when you're- You walk the file system, you can just CD into a directory and get to stuff. Yeah, it, it mounts um, like a 9P type directory. It's like a fuse directory. So it's not it's not a physical storage, but it's mounted just like it. So it your operating system treats it like a file system as okay. if, you're, if you have Keybase open. Yeah. If Keybase is closed, then that, that file system doesn't exist, but yeah, it's, it's mounted to, to like root slash key base. Uh, yeah, this is Steph. Um, I'm kind of liking the key, like KMS and OAuth type of workflow where um, the credentials are completely separate from how you generate um, and upload the Kubernetes secret. So the idea would be if you're authenticated um, in the system, like that LDAP group or whatever you're using, then um, you would have the rights to kick off an automated process that would swap out the key. Um, obviously, uh, you would need an even smaller set of admins. Um, like if that generator key ever got compromised, it's the same idea as Jots. Um, anyway, that's my two cents. Do you have an example by any chance, Steph, of the workflow you're describing. I'm actually not quite familiar with what exactly you're describing. So any kind of information, I would love to read up on that. Oh, right. So the idea would be you would do exactly like you're describing um, on your disk. It needs to be decrypted somewhere and then you need to uh, toss that. But the idea would be that 
no one would ever have to grab it and do it locally if you had a service. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really know if like, something like Lambda would make sense or if it would be another lockdown, um, you know, another lockdown jail or something like that. So the idea would be you'd have to fully automate it and then authenticate people, uh, you know, in a separate way. Um, not saying this isn't a lot more work than just pulling something down and generating a key. So um, basic, so if I'm understanding, it's kind of like you have like an AWS Lambda or you'd have Azure Function or something like that, that basically is locked by authentication, but that's the gatekeeper to the gate keys and you would need to authenticate against that first to access those credentials? Yes. So, so he, I mean, th there's kind of two general directions on this, right? One is you store it encrypted locally, like in Git or something like that. And for that, you can use PGP keys. In fact, you could have, if you've got five folks PGP keys, any of the five could encrypt and decrypt it for each other. Uh, that's what Black Box does, is it enables that. Or you could use something like a service, like Vault or is it Amazon's key, or uh, Azure's key value store for uh, secure the key value store. Um, you could use something like that, which is operated as a service. And then anybody who has uh, access controls on it can go ahead and read those details because they've got access to that service in the cluster right, or in their service. And so you could use something like that as well. Uh, I wouldn't be checked in and get, you'd have to document, okay, go ahead and fetch this thing locally. And then once it's fetched locally, go ahead and do it and clean up after yourself. Um, if you're doing something, especially in a Helm workflow or, or something would have to get to those files or in a, a Kubernetes where you'd have to push it into the cluster. So there's that kind of thing. Maybe there's a third one where uh, you have something like um, sealed secrets, which I'm still not sure of all the workflows on it yet, but the key for that, which you have to have backed up, you could store in one of these key systems. Yep, SOPs, uh, that was one of them that I looked at as well. Um, which looks nice because it can tie into some of these systems. It's sort of along the same lines as, as black box in that. Uh, looking at things like uh, Git Crypt, one of the things with that is that when you check stuff out, like you clone the repo, it is now transparently decrypted for you. And so just like Keybase, uh, anybody can walk the system if you've got it checked out there. So it doesn't really solve that. Ah, the Helm Secrets plugin. I did not know about this one. Do folks have a, a preference on the style um, where it's stored encrypted in Git with certain keys versus stored somewhere else with more access controls on top of it? Thanks, Josh, for the link, by the way. Yep. I tend to prefer something that's stored behind a, an access control firewall rather than something that just everybody gets the block. Okay. I should note on this call too, we had, we had also discussed services like LastPass, but I think not necessarily ruled it out, but at least mentioned one of the big cons in the list that if you want to have a LastPass organization, it costs money per head. Uh, LastPass doesn't really work for these secrets that you're going to use in a Helm or Kubernetes workflow either, right? Not necessarily, although there are, LastPass does have an API and there is, I, I had linked in a post where, um, uh, the LastPass API was used to connect to Kubernetes secrets. Um, I only mentioned that because it's one of the few that, that have been listed that has those kinds of access controls and, you know, browser plugins to prevent key logging and stuff like that. You can also, we, yeah. You know, I was just going to say, we can't actually get it because the CNCF does it and uh, I'm going to talk with them in the next few days about what the setup should be and what we need to do to get Keybase and how that, or I'm sorry, to get LastPass Enterprise and how that would work for us. So right. we are looking into that. Um, okay. It's kind of a, a uh, uh, <laughs> how does it fit into our workflows? Because I'm really thinking not just about sharing credentials, but actually storing and encrypted secret files and things like that with the Kubernetes yeah. and Helm workflows, what that would look like. Yeah, let me send you a link. Or actually, I'll, I'll I posted it in our last document. Okay. An example of how that works. Have we looked into Key Vault as well, the Azure service? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of is, is how would that one work? Because then you get the access controls based around your ability to access the account. And so we could look into to Key Vault for that and what the workflows would be like. Mm -hmm. All right. 
we're about three minutes over right now. Um, Time trackers, thanks. So, uh, Freena, what, what do you need from us? Do, do you just want us to ping you if we have specific opinions or? If you've got opinions or ideas at the moment, most of this seems to be put on me to just make a call and go with it. Um, and I would like other feedback and input to either uh, validate the decision or um, come up with some good general direction because we might iterate on this later but i want to be smart out of the gate i'll try to chase down some answers to your still secrets questions um, thank you sorry i kind of missed that yesterday no worries all right and then um since we're pretty far over let's go ahead and do assignments real quick um can somebody do uh moderator next week I can. Josh. Josh. All right. Uh, notes. I can do notes. And issue triage. It seems to be rotating between myself and Justin. So I'd like for someone else to do it, but I can do it again. I'll do it again. And I can take it. Okay, thanks, Adam. All right, and then uh, since we're five minutes over, um, Josh, can we bump? Uh, is yeah, there, that is there was. Anything you want to touch on real quick? No, so that was me getting worried that I was going to be a maintainer at a seven ninths chance, and what that meant. So. Um, this is just a list of questions I had against what the governance, uh, what it means to be a maintainer and what, what the responsibilities are. So I don't know. It's definitely, like you said, a five hour discussion. So. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to just grab some time and talk about it, Josh, I'm also happy to chat about these kinds of things. Oh no, I was, it was more of a, how can we, like what can we do to make it, to make our process uh, like super efficient and things like that. It wasn't, I don't know, you can look, I just put all the stuff that's in italics is from the doc and then the rest is stuff I put on there. Awesome, well thanks again for uh, handling the, the voting and everything. Um, uh, Matt's squared, and uh, I think this wraps us up. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.